Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at particle systems in Unity. Um, so basically particle systems can be used to um, make different effects in your games like smoke um, or fire or sparks um, can be used for like water bubbles a whole range of different effects. Um, so a particle system is made up of several particles and there are different properties that we can apply to those um, particles and we can also use scripts as well to um, uh, to activate particle systems, turn them on, turn them off or um, change a particle system. Okay, so to add a particle system to your scene, I've got just a simple scene here and I'm going to click on game object and then particle system which will show up here in the hierarchy and it will also show up somewhere in your scene. Um, now I can already see that there's a particle system there working so it actually starts working in your scene view straight away so it will basically simulate the particle system what it will look like even while you're in scene mode so you don't need to go to, to uh, game mode. Anyway, I'm going to move that particle system over here, just where it can be seen. I'm just going to spin around a little bit. Okay, there we go. So I've got a simple particle system here. The great thing about adding a particle system um, is that it already gives you particles to work with. So by default, you'll see this effect, and you can just kind of take it from there. So you've already got something to work with. Um, you'll also notice down the bottom here, you'll see particle effect. You've got pause, stop, playback speed, playback time, and then if you stop, you can simulate it again. So that's what you have to start with. If you have the particle, particle system selected in your hierarchy, there are different effects that you can work with. So, for example, the duration of the particle system. So at the moment, the duration is five seconds and it's on a loop. Um, so it will run for five seconds and then it will kind of repeat. But the way that it's working at the moment, it's kind of seamless. Um, so you can count to five seconds and then it will start again. And then at 10 seconds, it will start again, but it's seamless. So it doesn't um, look like any different on each loop. Okay, so that's looping. If I turn off looping, stop it and then simulate it again, it should run for five seconds and then it should stop. And that's the end of the particles. There's no more particles coming out. Okay, so um, you can set the duration, you can set looping on or off. You can also set a start delay, um, a speed as well. So we can increase the speed here. Okay, so you can see that the particles are coming out a lot faster. Um, just turn that down a little bit. You can change the size as well. So you can make the particles much bigger. Um, and other pro uh, properties as well that you can work with, like the rotation, the color. So you can click on that um, white box there and pick a different color. Okay, so if you wanted uh, like smoke, then you could uh, increase the size of each particle and you could pick a start color and you could make it like a gray or um, black kind of smoke effect, okay? So that kind of looks a bit like smoke, but really you will not get, if you're wanting to do something like flames or um, fire or you're wanting to do um, you know, smoke or anything like that, you won't necessarily get that effect with just one particle system. So um, sometimes it's a combination of several particle systems working together to create an effect. So you might have like three particle systems that look like smoke, but um, each one might have like a slightly different color or slightly different speed. So it just kind of blends in a little bit and um, gives it a bit more depth. So that's basically how to change the initial properties there, like the color, the size, um, the speed, delay, rotation. Um, there's other things as well there that you can work with. Okay, um, if we go down, you can also change max particles. Um, you can tick, oops, if you click on emission, so not the little checkbox there, but if you 
click on emission here, you'll get some more properties. So you can change it to either time or distance. So um, for example, at the moment we might just um, make these particles a little bit smaller. So we'll set that size back to one. Okay, so we could change the rate to 100 or maybe even 1000. And you can see that there's a lot more particles like this bigger burst of particles there. Okay, but what we can also do here if we have rate and we, if we um, select emission and then we have time selected, we can actually add bursts. So what we could do is maybe after three seconds, we could add a burst of 50 particles. So we could stop that and run it again. So we've got normal particles coming out and then at three seconds, there's suddenly a burst of more particles. Okay, so just to make that a little bit more obvious, we might make it 200 particles. All right, so a few particles coming out there and then suddenly a big burst of particles there at three seconds. Okay, um, and we could add more bursts there as well. So if it may be six seconds, and what we'll need to do is maybe make the duration a bit longer here to 10 seconds. So it, it, um, oops. at uh, three seconds, we might have 200 particles. And at six seconds, we might have um, a thousand particles. Okay. So we can simulate that. So a few particles coming out at three seconds, we have 200 particles. And then another three seconds later, we have a thousand particles. Okay, so we can add a whole heap of bursts there just by clicking on that little plus. And if we want to get rid of any, we can click on the minus next to them. So if we want it back to normal. Okay, next to shape, if we click on shape, we can change the shape. So by default, it's a cone. Um, so this is not the actual shape of the um, particles. This is the shape of the particle system. So the shape that the particles are kind of confined within. So at the moment, it's a cone. We can see that cone shape here. We could change it to a box and we could also increase the size if we wanted to of that box. Um, we could choose a mesh, a circle, edge, hemisphere, a sphere. So there's a whole heap of different things we can work with there. Oops, don't mean to play that. Okay, so if we simulate that again, um, you'll see that this time, it's not that the particles are staying within this cube, but the particles are kind of in the shape of a cube or a box. So rather than coming out in a cone, they're sort of staying within like a, a box kind of shape. So to make it a little bit more obvious, what we can do is we can increase the rate of particles to maybe a thousand and then simulate it. And now we can see that these um, particles here are kind, of are kind of conform to a cube shape. Okay, so if we changed it to a sphere, you can see now that it's in a round so it's a sphere shape. Okay, so we've got sphere, hemisphere, cone, box, mesh which actually need you need to choose a mesh to do that so um, if you have a 3d shape that you've imported into unity and it's got a mesh then you could pick it um, from here just click on that little circle button and choose a mesh uh, we've got circle which is flat and then edge okay so i'm going to go back to cone you can also change the angle the radius and where it emits from. Okay, and you could tick random direction if you wanted to. Another thing that you can look at is velocity over lifetime. So you could tick that and you could um, increase the velocity on one of the axes. So maybe on the x axis, where you can, we could um, add a value there. So you can see that it's kind of going off in that direction. So positive x direction. Um, and we could also do that on the Y axis. So we could fiddle around with that there. So that's velocity over lifetime. We've also got force over lifetime as well. 
Okay, so it's a little bit different to velocity over lifetime. Rather than just pushing over to the positive x direction, it's actually heading over that way, but then it really kind of speeds up and pushes over there. All right, we've got color over lifetime as well. So we could start with one color and then it goes to another color. Okay, you could also um, have a gradient. So what you can do is um, click on this little color box here. You can pick a color. So I, click, I clicked on that little selector there, chose my color. I could click on this selector here, pick a different color. And now I've got like a, a gradient that we can work with. Um, oops. So that's color over lifetime. There's also color by speed size over lifetime okay so if you click on size over lifetime and click on this bar here you can choose how big you want it to be at the start so maybe really small and then how big you want it to be as it over its lifetime so at the end so if you have a look the particles are really small it's just like dust when it comes out here and then it gradually gets bigger and bigger and bigger each particle. All right. So you could fiddle around with that. You could make them big and then they gradually get smaller as well. So different things that you can work with there. Size by speed, rotation over lifetime, um, rotation by speed, collision as well. So um, if you tick collision, you can get it to collide with planes, or you can tick, choose world, and it will collide with anything in the world. So um, I think at the moment it's actually colliding with the water. So you might want to move it up. There we go. So um, basically this will collide with anything. So if I put like a, a cube or a sphere here, then the particles could collide and kind of bounce off that as well. All right. Um, so you can choose collides with everything or you can choose a layer. So maybe you only want it to collide with certain objects in your scene, then you can do that as well. Okay, so if you choose world, it will collide with any object in your scene. Um, and, and if you pick collides with, you can choose specifically what you want it to collide with. Okay, I'm gonna turn collision off for now. Um, so there's other different properties that you can work with there, but we'll just leave it at that for now. What we'll do is we'll add a script. So we'll just simulate this again. All right, so we've got a particle system working there. And what we'll do is we'll add a script that can actually control this particle system. So it can turn it on and off. All right, so to do this, I'm in my scripts folder in the assets folder. So I'm gonna right click and click on create C sharp script. And I'm just gonna call it uh, particle script. And I'm going to um, attach that to the particle system, so drag it on there. Let's go to the particle system. There should be a script there. Yep. And we're going to double click on that script to open it up in MonoDevelop. Okay. So in the update method, firstly, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to get the particle system to only play after a key has been pressed on the keyboard. So to do that, what we'll need to do is just go back to Unity, click on the particle system, and make sure that play on awake is unchecked. Okay? And we can go back to MonoDevelop, and we can go to the update method and start adding our code. So we can add an if statement, and we can have something like um, some keyboard input here. So we could have input dot uh, get key down, key code, and then pick a key. So I'm going to Choose the E key on the keyboard and then specify what happens when the E key is pressed. So to get um, the particle system to play, you can type in game object dot, um, whoops, lowercase g, game object dot get component angle brackets particle system, so that's the component we want, the particle system, bracket, bracket, and then dot play, all right, and then close 
open and close brackets, um, and a semicolon. All right, so I've got game object dot get component particle system dot play there. So this will play the particle system, but only when the E key has been pressed. So save the script, Command S or Control S if you're using Windows. Back to Unity, script is updated and there is an error on line 17. Okay, I'm just missing a semicolon there for my if statement. That's better. So save that again. Um, not a semicolon, a, a bracket. So make sure that you close, when you write an if statement, you close that curly bracket, which I forgot to do there. Um, back to Unity. And let's fix the error. Don't need to worry about that error. All right, so um, if we play the scene, Let's move around. Okay, having a look at the water there. This is roughly where my particle system should be. So at the moment it's not playing. Um, there's no particle system there. But if I press the E key, particle system starts playing. Okay, what we could also do, we can go back to the script and just change it a little bit. So this time what we can have is another if statement inside this one. So we could have and I'll delete that. So we've got if input dot get key key down key key down key code e. We've got that. So if the e key is pressed on the keyboard, it will run whatever code is inside this if statement. We're going to add another if statement inside it. So if game oops, lowercase g sorry game object dot uh, get component. Uh, and then angle brackets, particle system. And then we can have open close bracket dot. All right, now this time we're gonna use is playing. So we can actually check if the particle system is currently playing. So if that is equal to true, then inside this if statement, We'll say game object dot get component particle system dot stop. Okay. So in other words, if we press the E key on the keyboard and if the particle system is currently playing, then by pressing the E key on the keyboard, we'll stop the particle system from playing. Okay. Then we can add an else statement. So else, in other words, um, if the particle system is not playing, then we can play it. So we can just copy and paste this line here, down to here, and change that to play. All right, so we'll press the E key on the keyboard. If we press the, key, the E key, it will check if the particle system is playing. If it is, then it will stop the particle system. But if it's not playing, then it will play the particle system. So we'll save that, go back to Unity, scripts updated, there's no errors. This error here is just to do with an audio variable that's not being used in one of my other scripts, so it's nothing to worry about. Okay, we'll play it. Now, currently the particle system isn't playing. I'll press E, and that plays the um, particle system. I'll press E again, and that particle system will continue to run, but now, um, the particle system is turned off, it's not playing, so um, it's stopped. All right, press E again, and the particle system runs again. So when you press um, the key to stop the particle system, the particle system that is currently running will finish running first, and then it just won't run it again. All right, so if I press E now, that will finish there, but it won't run it again. All right, so, um, that's basically how to add a particle system and um, change the properties of the particle system in your game. And we've also looked at how to um, turn a particle system on and off using a script in C Sharp. Thanks for watching.